My name is Roman Martinez. The best way to describe my art would be pop art. Uh, if Banksy was the Mexican love child of Jackson Pollock and Andy Warhol. Born in Dallas, grew up in Houston. I, this is my fourth time living here in El Paso. Um, I lived in Mexico for a few years. Growing up, my background, um, just being a Chicano, growing up in Texas, I grew up in a very diverse uh, neighborhood in, in Houston. Um, Hispanics, Latinos from all over the world, um, Central South America, um, Asians, all sorts of Africans and Middle Easterners, um, but just a, an eclectic mix of friends, um, and so it really molded me um, early on. Uh, it's just being open to new experiences, new ideas, um, new things. Period. Um, and then my time in Mexico, I, I lived in Chiapas, uh, where um, the Zapatista Rebellion uh, started, and. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, the work that they've been doing. Um, big fan of uh, uh, Emiliano Zapata, Pancho Villa, um, and then coming into the, the art side of things. Uh, real um, inspiration was um, David Alfaro Siqueiros. Um, he's one of the big three. Him with uh, uh, Diego Rivera and Orozco. I'm um, just a, a huge fan of all that he did. Um, it's such a large scale, such um, just magnitude in all their paintings. It was just amazing. Um, and I started off doing murals, and I still do murals, um, but I, I switch over to canvas paintings uh, just because it's I can work at home, I can paint what I want to paint as opposed to paying what the client wants. I want to paint uh, stuff that inspires me, uh, that I enjoy painting, whether it's you know, uh, modified portraits of uh, Pancho Villa, of Emiliano Zapata, or um, Star Wars, who I'm such a huge fan um, from the time I was, you know, four watching it at the drive in. Combining the Star Wars and um, Loteria aspects of it all, um, I had seen something uh, before that really inspired me, and I was like, I really like it, but I can do it my own. Um, I wanted to do something uh, that I could uh, disseminate quickly and also still be an original painting that I hand touched, hand painted each one. Um, and so that all my clients, the customers that bought my paintings would have an original piece. I, I never do the same one over, um, yeah, never with the same color combination, um, never with the same techniques. Um, I'll lay in different textures, different backgrounds. Um, even though it might be the same stencil, it, it's a different painting. Um, and each piece is done by hand. And uh, I really enjoy doing it, it's just fun. The thing that I really admired um, about Andy Warhol, um, besides the being able to disseminate his, his works fairly quickly and get them out there, uh, but I love the colors, I love the color combination of, of taking something uh, different and the, are taking an object that we're used to seeing and changing it up so we see it in a different light. And that's typically what I do, um, you know, and that's where I, I draw a lot of my inspiration from Andy Warhol is the colors. Big fan of uh, turquoise, uh, really like the pinks. Uh, the combination of the two, uh, pinks, golds, reds, turquoise, I just, I can't get away from it. 
Um, I'll use other colors. I try to stay away from uh, just sort of mute, kind of earth tones. Um, I avoid it like the plague if I can. Using the different colors, uh, particularly with the uh, the Mexican Revolutionary stencils, the Mexican paintings, using those bright colors. One, it, it, it I think it's it's a nod to uh, Mexican culture uh, with those bright pinks and blues. But also, it's revolutionary that because it's uh, we're taking an image that a lot of people are familiar with, and you know, you paint it pink, and all of a sudden, it's this. It has this new. Uh, meaning behind it and you know the whoever uh is the client can take whatever they want from it but for me it's it's basically just comes down to color choice and um, what i like what i'm feeling at the day i think life affects my art typically by um my mood i, I will definitely say um when i'm in a better mood which tends to be most of the time i a lot more prolific i paint a lot uh, if I'm not feeling it, honestly, I probably don't paint that much you know, because it, it does show in my art. I, I tend to go a little bit darker sometimes, and it's just, it just it, it it really drains me. I think um, it's hard to be real productive and at the same time still enjoying my art if I'm not in a good mood or if I'm not feeling it. To be honest, I'd love to see it go worldwide. I, I'd love to reach a wider audience. I do realize that my art is pretty uh, tied to Chicano culture, to Mexican culture um, here in the Southwest. Uh, but as we grow and expand as a, as a, as a race and our culture um, reaches every corner of the world, um, I, I think my audience would appreciate those things, whether or not they're uh, Latino or not. Um, have an appreciation for, for Mexican culture um, can reach across the world and ideally that would be my my end goal uh, we'd love to move back to Mexico and have a gallery down there and sell my stuff for a while. I, I definitely think Chicano culture has in, influenced uh, mainstream culture a lot I mean uh, Sugar Skulls, Calaveras they've uh, becoming more recognized um, along with uh, you know, Loteria, the Piñatas, um, just the idea of, uh, of Mexican culture, uh, it's being more widely embraced and um, definitely more mainstream. You'll see pictures of, you know, Frida, um, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a modern setting, you know, take a, an old painting of, or a picture of uh, Frida, but, you know, she's like, holding a Starbucks or eating a taco or a hamburger or something along those lines. And so um, I, I definitely think uh, appreciation for Chicano Mexican culture has uh, really blown up in the last few years. Um, I'm definitely going to continue to expand uh, my work, stencil work, and um, but I want to see it evolve. I want, um, I'm going to start doing bigger pieces. Um, right now I've been doing a lot of shows. Um, I'm a little pop-up markets, art and um, definitely want to uh, expand on that. But at the same time, um, you can only paint, you know, one thing for so long before you get burnt out. It gets old. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely looking at, at, at growth as far as just size and just overall scope of the paintings that I'm doing, as well as uh, trying to reach different audiences, uh, going out to bigger shows, further out. Honestly, if it wasn't for my wife, I don't know if I would be where I'm at. Uh, she really uh, encouraged me um, uh, to try new things, um, gives me ideas that I never would have thought of, uh, new avenues of uh, reaching people with my art, uh, new ideas, uh, and everything I do. She's super supportive, she's my best salesman, she's my cheerleader, um, and she, like, she's my business manager. She's my partner, um, we're in this together, uh, and so she's super supportive in all that I do. One day my wife had said, you know, you should just 
put it, just let it all drip down and do that. And I was like, yeah, well, that's a great idea. And that's where a lot of the drip effect, that's where it all came from. It was uh, taking what I was already doing, inspiration from my daughter and then an idea from my wife. So after working as an artist in Houston and Austin, and then moving here to El Paso, I, I've been really impressed with just the community here. It's expanded, it's grown a ton in just the, the short time that I've been back. Uh, it's very, uh, people have been very helpful, super supportive, uh, go to each other's shows, buy each other's art. Um, but it just, it, it's real, it's just nice just to have such a supportive community of uh, artists and people working together, people to promote your shows, um, and, and really appreciate what you do. And uh, El Paso's been great. I love it here.